Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 56, Generics. In this session, we'll understand the basics of Generics and the advantages of using Generics. Now, Generics are introduced in C-Sharp 2.0. Generics basically allow us to design classes and methods decoupled from the data types, which will allow our code to be reused with any data type. Let's understand what we mean by this with an example. Now here you can see a very simple calculator class which has got an R equal method. And if you look at this method, it's very simple. All it's doing is it's taking in two values of type integer, comparing those two. If they are equal, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. Now let's see how to use this method. Now let's say boolean equal is equal to since the method is a static method I can just use the name of the class instead of creating an instance of that let's say for example if I pass one comma two they are not equal and then if equal we want to say the numbers are equal otherwise not equal very simple code now if we run this obviously since these are not equal it will print not equal that's fine but then the issue here is if you look at this calculator class and this R equal method, now this R equal method is actually tied to the data type. Now let's say the user wants to compare two strings if they are equal or the user wants to compare two characters if they are equal. Now can he use this method? He cannot because this method only works with integer data type. So your method is basically now tightly coupled with the data type that it operates upon. Okay, so if I make this method, let's say for example, I want to compare two strings, maybe A and B. Look at that, the moment I do that, you already have a red squiggly there indicating a compiler error. Okay, so obviously the error message, it makes sense. The best overloaded method for calculator.r equal int comma int has some invalid arguments so it's expecting integer arguments but you're passing string arguments into this method so obviously it doesn't compile so how do i make this method operate on any data type because you know the logic is pretty simple if they are equal return true otherwise return false so it need not be tied to any type okay so how can i do that one way to make this method operate on any data type is just replace this integer with object data type okay the moment we do that look at that the error goes away and look at this this is a and b they are not equal if i run this obviously it will say not equal but on the other hand just to make sure it's working as expected a and a i run this okay they are equal so now if you look at this this method is reusable with any type it's not now tied to any type but the problem here is you know and why are we in the first place how are we able to do this if i convert the data type from integer to object then i'm able to pass strings i'm able to pass integers how is that possible you know we know that within dotnet framework every type directly or indirectly inherits from system to object so obviously you can you know since string integer you know any type you take uh, for that matter you know directly or indirectly it inherits from system dot object so you can pass that type as an inherited type into this method that's how it works but then the problem with this there are two issues with this way of coding one is let's say for example if i pass 10 and 10 integers now, when I actually run this program at runtime, what's going to happen is this 10, we know integer is a structure, which means it's a value type. So at runtime, this value type needs to be converted into object type. You know, object is nothing but a class. Look at that, the IntelliSense class system dot object. But, but whereas integer is actually a structure, a value type. So at runtime, this value type needs to be converted into reference type, which is nothing but your class. So converting value types to reference types is called as boxing. So boxing is happening unnecessarily here, just for the purposes of comparison. Okay, so because of this unnecessary boxing and unboxing, what's going to happen is the performance is going to be degraded. That's one problem. Another problem with this method, look at this. Now, if somebody is calling this method, okay, now, 
The reason why they call this method is to determine if two values of the same type are equal or different. For example, I want to compare if two integers are equal or if two strings are equal or if two characters are equal. But since now you made this type as object, you know, users can say, okay, I want to compare if 10 is equal to AB. Now this doesn't make sense. You shouldn't be allowing that in the first place. But here our code will happily compile because what is the type that we are dependent upon? Object type. So you will be able to pass in anything for the first parameter and anything for the second parameter. Okay. So now this method is no longer strongly typed. We lost that. You know, we lost the strongly typed nature of this method number one. And number two, because of boxing and unboxing, there is performance decreation. So to solve both of these problems, we can actually make use of generics. Okay, so the best way to make this method independent of the data type is to use generics. Let's see how to do that. So obviously, you know, we don't want to be doing stuff like this. Let's say I want to compare AB with AB and determine if they are equal. Okay, so let's see how to correct that. So now, instead of object type, what I can basically do, see, it's using generics is very simple. Okay, all you have to do is put an angle bracket. See, I want to make this method generic now. Generic meaning I want to make this method independent of the type it operates upon. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to say some type. I don't know about the type. Okay, and the parameter that the user is going to pass in is going to be of this type T. Okay, so what is this T? We don't know. It could be integer, string, enum, whatever. It will only be known by the cl calling client. Okay, when somebody calls this method, that's when they specify on what type they want this method to operate upon. And then here we have to do a slight change because this is a type. You cannot directly compare them like this. Instead, you have to use the equals method which system.object provides to every type within .NET Framework. Okay, so T, I mean, we know that one is value one, the other one is value two. And both are of type T. Okay, so if value one, dot equals value 2 okay return value 1 dot equals value 2 if they are equal it will return true otherwise it's going to return false now look at this there is no hard coded logic here you know we are not telling on which type this method is going to operate upon all right now if you look at this one now what you need to do here is basically specify the type now let's say i want this method now to operate on the string type. Look at that. The moment you do that, the moment you specify, look at this. For or equal, you are saying the type is going to be string. So obviously, for this t, it's going to be string, which means value 1 and value 2, both of them have to be strings. But if somebody tries to compare integers and strings, let's say if somebody tries to do that, we immediately get an invalid arguments compiler error. Because it's expecting string comma string, but you're trying to pass an integer and a string, which will not be allowed. So we got that strongly typed nature back. Okay, that's one thing. And here, boxing and unboxing will never happen. Let's say, for example, if I want to compare two integers, okay, now when the moment I open this, look at that. Okay, now it's going to operate upon integers. Okay, it's not system.object. Integer is a value type. It's going to stay value type during that comparison. It's not going to be converted back into, you know, a reference type. Boxing will not happen. So we got that performance gain as well. So now, let's say I want to compare 10, 10, which are equal. Now, if we run this, obviously, uh, they are equal. So now, your code is actually type independent. So generics are nothing but this. Okay, generics make your code type independent. And that way you can reuse your code with any type. And obviously when you use generics, you know, you get that strongly typed nature number one. And you also have that performance gain from unnecessary boxing and unnecessary, you know, unboxing. Okay, generics actually are extensively used with the collection classes that are present in system.collections.generic namespace. You know, which will be, which we'll actually be talking about in the next session. Alright, now if you look at this one, here we made this method generic, 
okay it's also possible to make classes generic instead of saying okay i want this method to operate on any type you can say this class basically can operate on any type which means all the methods in this class are going to in a way operate on that type for example instead of specifying this t here what you can do is you can specify that t for the class itself so now you're making the class generic so instead of specifying the type here you specify that on the class maybe i want this class to operate on int data type okay the moment you do that here look at that this method is going to expect integer data types look at the intellisense all right so now if we run as you might expect the output will still be the same except that in this case we made this class generic in the previous example we made this method generic okay along the same lines you can also make interfaces generic delegates generic so let's go back to the slides so obviously generics are extensively used by collection classes available in the generics namespace which we'll be talking about in the next session and we have seen one way of making the r equal method you know basically operate on any type is to use the system dot object type but what are the disadvantages of using so your r equal method is no longer type safe and performance degradation degradation due to boxing and unboxing and obviously the best way to make a class or a method or an interface you know operate on any data type is basically to use generics using that specific type t now you might be wondering does it have to be t always no you can give it any meaningful name you want because you know here it's since it's a type that we are talking about it makes sense so i specified t generally the naming convention is to use t but you can of course give it any name that you want all right so on this slide you can find some resources for asp.net and c sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day